valuable. I think there's so much uh, information, so much uh, culture and heritage there that it needs to be protected. It needs to be, let's say, edified. We need to really share that with the world. Melissa and I were talking about that the other day, and I said, you know what, we could, what we could do, and I've been trying to make this pitch for quite some time, is take all the properties that the city has purchased and turn them into Chinese American, African American, Middle Eastern American, uh, Mexican American culture centers. A museum, cultural center. Yeah, each one of those buildings could represent cultures that settled El Paso. And you could have uh, events going on 365 days a year, not just uh, when there was a season of basketball or soccer or whatever, but all year long. And people would come from all over to go to those things. If you look at tourism, uh, all the research shows that people are more interested in learning about culture and heritage than they are to go see an athletic event, a sports event. I, uh, I love sports. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm an athletic supporter. But the um, rim shot. I, I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I really, I really think that Enrique's Enrique's property is very valuable, and that would be a great anchor for a cultural center. We could call it Borderland El Paso. Borderland, okay. And Melissa, your thoughts? Well, I was just thinking while you were t- making the reflection on the uh, sports event venue. You're right. You know, the, it's only a certain time of year. Plus, people can see that on TV. You know, they because a lot of times it's you know sent out of the area. Mm-hmm. So why should they come if they can see it on TV? And if they're coming to a sports event, usually it's in the evening or afternoon. Mm -hmm. They're pretty tired either before or after. They're not going to go looking at all the buildings around there. They're not going to be able to enjoy what Enrique has given our community. So where is this location in relation to the Duranguito that's been fenced off? Uh, Half a block? He's one block, one block west. So your your his area is not going to be taken for no. the arena. No, it's it's saved. But it's on the street adjacent to those that will yeah, be taken. Yeah, drop overland on Leon. And it's on Leon and, and off of uh, Paisano, really, mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, between Paisano and overland on Leon. And that area, uh, as historic as it is, you see that uh, that is a wide shot there of the uh, an aerial. And if we if you're on the radio only, then we're we're talking about pictures that we're putting on Facebook as it streams live. And if you're looking on Facebook, there it is. And where is it in that area there? Can you see there's, it? Yeah, there's an arrow pointing right to the property. What I did is I found an aerial oh, yeah. view of it, and then I expanded the aerial to give a more a close-up picture of the stash house. Well, thank you for the pictures. You've done wonders on making those things happen. And uh, there's, again, the uh, the front of the uh, the stash house. And uh, I believe that's uh, – who's that? We're all – that's all of us greeting the uh, the host of the show as they came in. Mm-hmm. And it, it, by the way, that that TV show – it was very unusual. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, it's very much to their formula. Melissa, you know, yeah. that's what they do. Oh, yeah. It's a TV show. I mean, they're going to have the highs and lows, you know. But looking at it from a from backing up and saying, well, the details are what they are. But it actually was a moment for El Paso to get a lot of publicity on a national exactly. basis. And we don't get that much publicity on anything historical. No. And it was a historical uh, publicity. And that's the good thing. You know, like you were talking about what we want to do there, what we've all been working for for a long time is to get recognition for El Paso about its great, rich, unique history. I'll bet you're going to get some visitors, Enrique. Oh, yes. We already do. <laughs> no, you already had visitors, but, <laughs> yeah. but this TV show is going to change that even bigger. Yes. Has it? it, it, it well, um, I see a lot of people swing, uh, passing by and standing there taking pictures outside the property. You know, willing to, uh, willing to go in and, and take a look at you know cl- closer, have a closer look of the of the site. Well, you, you had you had talked about putting a restaurant and a bar there. Yes, well, that, that's basically the idea. What we want to do is not not just open the, the 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 site or the property for the public as it is, but we want we want to offer something unique to the to the people of El Paso and tourists. Well, I'll tell you, we'll take a break here at this point. Come back and you explain that, what you have, the plans you have there. And sure. also we'll go into some of the details of the TV show about what was found there because not everybody saw it, but a lot of people did. And it's an interesting thing to figure out, uh, you know, where all that's coming from. Are we getting comments already? You or Andrew, or Melissa, anybody? Oh, yeah, yeah. We did. <laughs> There's a sound issue with Facebook, but we're back on. Everybody's online. We've got... Uh... Oh, Angie's checking in from Colorado. We've got uh, some other people here. I'm trying to get back up. Marjorie Rivellis Benton is online with us today, and they're all just checking in saying good morning. Well, that's cool. And we should remind everybody that we're going to change chairs here with uh, a younger kid, and and, uh, we're going to be hosting this show and next week. And after that, you and I are retiring. Yeah, we're kind of retiring, yes. And so you have plans of going places, and I have plans of Yeah, You're going to stay here. Bernie and I look like we're going to be heading east towards central Texas and away you go. And, but, but that's cool because we really like history and we're going to have the podcast now it's Texas history A to Z. And we're going to be doing interviews and things with people down there. Kind of like what we've been doing here, but it'll be on a podcast basis. And we'll 
be promoting all of Texas history. From the center. From the center. Well, good center for you. of the world. Good for you guys. So <laughs> all this is kind of happening at the same time. And as iHeart basically takes over the radio show, uh, the, uh, Andrew, you, your first show will be on the 19th of March. That's it. You're not going to talk anymore. <laughs> yeah, anyway, he, he's busy. He talks all week. <laughs> well, he's busy in there making pictures happen and that kind of thing. So it'll be, we'll talk more about that in a bit as well. And uh, we'll be back in a moment on the El Paso History Radio Show. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell. Navage uses powered suction to pull saline in one nostril to the very back of the nose where germs can get trapped and multiply, and then out the other nostril, flushing out mucus and microbes so you can breathe better, sleep deeper, snore less, and stay healthier. Join over 2 million others and find out for yourself how refreshing and easy to use Navage is. At Navage.com, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, Bed Bath, and Target. Navage. Clean nose. Healthy life. Fellow Texans, play it safe. Protect yourself and your family with a free COVID-19 vaccination for adults and children. Get your free vaccine at Horizon Fire Department Station Number 2 at 12361 Paseo del Este Boulevard this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. No appointment necessary. Susan, it's so great to finally be able to get together again. Oh, it sure is. And I really appreciate you picking up the bill. I'm happy to. I've got the extra cash. Since we've all been driving so much more again, I've been using GetUpside, the free gas app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the GetUpside app? Yes, up to 25 cents a gallon. Cash back every time I buy gas. Does that actually add up to anything? I'll make 200 to $300 this year. Wow. Wow, that's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free GetUpside app now. Download the free GetUpside app now in the App Store or Google Play to save up to 25 cents a gallon when you buy gas. Use promo code FUEL for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's up to 50 cents a gallon on your next fill-up. You can cash out anytime right to your bank, PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code FUEL for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code FUEL. Teens in foster care will love you even if you don't know the lingo dad bod now the result of the occasional donut always washed down with confidence brought to you by the u.s department of health and human services adopt u.s kids and the ad council visit adoptuskids.org news radio 690 ktsm el paso and now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the el paso history show Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By M1 EP Management Corporation, 915-592-4549. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso Souvenirs and Gift Shopping. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. A lot of history to pass through here. They've got a lot, uh, some time left to do it. So anyway, we're the History Show, El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook. And you need to go there for our weekly promo announcements of the topics in the program each week. 
And also, we have a TV channel now where all these videos are put on there. It's El Paso History TV on YouTube. And uh, it's uh, www.youtube.com. Say www real fast. Www. Yeah, yeah there you go. That's what mine sound like. YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV. And a uh, bunch of documentaries I produced over the years are on there. And now we've also got the 20 TV segments that we did. Bernie, we did those a couple of years back. Yeah. Like the last one we did was uh, 2020. That was really fun. I have a, uh, quite a few people said, are you going to do more? Wouldn't it be fun? Yeah. Uh, that's a lot of work. <laughs> it is. It is. Wait, I, give, I give you and Andrew a lot of credit because you did a lot of the legwork on it. Well, we produced them, shot them, wrote them, and, and away we went. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, it was a busy moment. I think the drone thing was really fun. Well, that was more fun once I got the drone going. Yeah. Um, and also, I got drone footage of the uh, the Guadalupe church in in Juarez, oh, Juarez. Juarez. Yeah. and i didn't shoot that because they my drone won't go over there and come back <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if it goes over they're probably going to stay bye over bye there. <laughs> but i had a guy who did that and i said hey can i buy your footage and so we put that on mm -hmm. so we ended up putting drone footage on that and if you want to go see those those are also at youtube.com slash el paso history tv and i think that's a worthy thing to do because we did 20 segments and if you look at just those 20 segments about three minutes each uh and what they made us do they we cut them up Mm -hmm. So that there was uh, like a minute and 10, a minute 15 in the 6 p.m. news and a minute 10, minute 15 in the 10 p.m. news. But when I put them on, on YouTube, I put them back together. Mm -hmm. So it's one story of almost three minutes, two and a half, three minutes. And that's what you can see on that on that channel on YouTube. If you want to go take a look at that, you can get a pretty good overview of El Paso. You're not going to get everything. No, I think what's nice about that, too, Jack, is you know people that want to learn a little bit about history of the history of El Paso. It's just enough to whet their appetite. And maybe get them to look at the longer versions, the ones that you did previous to that, or come to El Paso and see what we're all about. Yeah, I mean, if you don't, you don't live here, you can also find a book somewhere. Yeah, and and do that. So anyway, all right, that's what well, we got there. What do you got? And I just want to remind everyone that Pepe's Restaurant in Canutillo serves up great New Mexican cuisine and also can cater your large or small events. Oh yes, Pepe's is located at sixty seven sixty one Donovan Drive in Canutillo, or you can give you can give a call to Pepe or Lorena at nine one five. 877-2152. And we all want you to remember Pepe's is home of the one and only Margarita. Juan. 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 We like that. Juan. You know, actually, Mr. Griggs, Mr. Griggs used that uh, slogan back in his day. Yeah. Yeah. And the this is a Griggs he restaurant the recipes, on. and it's a, it's not in the old Griggs building, but it's 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 good food. All right. Talking more about the uh the stuff that went on on the history channel. And Enrique Guardo, Gu Guayardo. Guajardo. 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 The well, GU is a hard one. Like, you're so Anglo. <laughs> I am. I mean, I grew up in El Paso and I heard all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, but you, I didn't but really. You lived in Washington too long. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I went there for several years. Anyway, to the point of, of Enrique's uh, stash house, the uh, you have plans for it. And right now, it's uh, basically an historic place that you've kind of really done the inside really nice. Um, and what, what are your plans for that? Well, well yeah. yes, uh, this project is, a, we divided it into three phases. First phase was to re restore the whole property, you know, cause you know, like I talked before, or I said before it was in bad condition. Oh yeah. The footings of the, of the house were, you know, not in good shape. And so the first phase is just to restore, bring back what was there before you know replaster you know footing put new footings you know flooring all that second phase it's working with the with the architects and figure out how to put this uh house into code for a restaurant you know remember that if if, if we're if we're gonna make this or turn this house into a restaurant we need to be in compliance with you know, there's a, a lot of things, yeah. a lot of things you need to be in compliance, especially for handicap and, you know, electricity, and all that parking what? and everything. At parking. the moment, you don't have plumbing in that house. No, not. No. Remember, that house was built in, in the 1800s. And back then, they did not have any type of sewer lines or, right. you know, restrooms. Yeah, a thing in the back of the hole. Well, right. they had two privies in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, watch out for that. <laughs> You just shook him. That earthquake was uh, was Bernie hitting the table. Uh, anyway, uh, the, the the we're talking about the Pancho Villa stash house on Leon Street in downtown. You, you can and see now that the house, the, the, the rock house there, it's the soldiers' house. They used to stay there. So both those buildings are the property we're talking about. Yes, sir. And the main identifier out front near the street is an historic marker. 
That is correct. Put there by the Texas Historical Commission. The yes, Historical right? Commission. Yeah. Well, El Paso County Historical Commission was the one that contracted the THC. THC has to oversee the uh, the approval of these markers around the area. And that was one that they did approve. Uh, now we've got it. They have a number of them in the county. Who I speak English. A number of them in the county that uh, the County Historic Commission actually paid for and commissioned uh, to put in because the THC felt it wasn't of state importance. It was only, we felt it was only of local importance. So we created a, a, a CHC local one. And Andrew, I think you have a picture of that in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a, what, what it is, is the uh, historic marker that's out on the street and it sort of identifies everything you're thinking about here. Mm-hmm. And it also tells the story um, of but, what happened. Yeah. Of what happened. Maybe after the break, we can get into the story. In fact, if you can't find it right now, Andrew J. Polk is in the control room fumbling and looking around for pictures and doing a great job. <laughs> but no, I mean, always he does. I mean, thumbing through the pictures, <laughs> thumbing through, not fumbling through. But yeah. anyway, the, the, uh, the, uh, and Andrew, by the way, is the guy Monday through Friday on talk El Paso. And he is the guy who does 4 PM to 6 PM. And he'll be taking over this radio show come the 19th of March. And you got that all figured out already, right? You got a oh, lot yeah. of a uh, great programming <laughs> coming up there as well. Continuing to focus on El Paso history. That show will be focused on uh, geologic history of El Paso and how the literal landscape we live on was shaped over the eons. We'll hear more about that from Andrew. Thank you for, for doing what you're doing. And thank you for taking this over from us. And if you hadn't heard, we're uh, retiring and Andrew's going to be the new guy here. And he's sort of like an old guy. He's been listening to this for years from me and also for years here on the radio show. So anyway. And at home, I'm sure, when he was young growing up. He heard, he actually participated in a lot of the documentaries. I said, stand here, push this red button, <laughs> and uh, take this shot here. Uh, Enrique Gallo got Guajardo. Yes, sir. I, I, you know, <laughs> I, I, I think they said it with a G on, on that TV show. With a G, yes. Oh, I probably. Did, yeah. Yeah, talk about, they're from up northeast uh, United States, so they're really not going to be able to get the trolls or anything else. So we're talking about the Stash House in downtown on Leon Street, Pancho Villa Stash House, and also the TV show that they made out of that. And we'll get to Enrique Guajardo a little better after this next break. Hey, I'm getting better at this. Yeah. Took me years to do yeah, Harry Von Farley. You're, <laughs> you're leaving. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so and, and the thing is, though, it's, uh, it's an interesting story. We've got more to talk about. And Enrique will be here. Bernie, you're sticking around. Yes, I am. Uh, I st- until you go to Pepe's. Yes, I am. We're all going to Pepe's. I'm driving, so he's. Oh, oh I, Bernie I really will have to go. Yeah. Bernie will be delivered to Pepe's today. That'd be <clears> yes, great. Yes, I'm. Yeah. Special and, delivery. And Re- Enrique, we talked you into it. Yes. Ah, excellent. So you come come join us. You have to find out where this is because it's out on Donovan. Yeah, it's going to be my first time there. I can't wait to go eat there. Well, do, you, do you have your papers? You can go into Canada. Yeah. I okay. Do. Good. Yeah, yeah you got to be you're crossing the border out of El Paso. <laughs> yeah. Enough of these details. We're going to take a break here. Do you want to take a phone call or shall we do that? What do you think? It's up to you guys. Sure. What the heck? What's that phone number? Well, give us a call at 915-544-5876 or 915-544-KTSM. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. Have you ever felt depressed about work only to have your dad be like, why are you so down? So you told him you hate your job and he said, well, you better talk yourself out of it. And then you thought, hmm, I love to talk. I could host a podcast. And then you went to Spreaker from iHeart and started a podcast and got good at it, then monetized it, then quit your boring job, then told your dad, thanks for the advice. And he was like, well, that's not what I meant. And I don't understand what a podcast is, but you seem happy. So that's great, kiddo. You ever do that? Well, you could. At Spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. Ask your dad. Yeah, actually. Mass Mutual knows that your finances can be an uncomfortable conversation. Mark, we should really talk about our money. Yep, we really should. Like we never talk about our savings. No, we never talk about that. Or our assets. Or our debt. Yeah, we really should talk about our debt. We need one of those financial plans. One of those will make a difference. We should talk about it. We really should. 
Talk to us about financial wellness today. Feel comfortable about tomorrow. Mass Mutual. Live Mutual. Texans, play it safe. Protect yourself and your family with a free COVID-19 vaccination for adults and children. Get your free vaccine at Horizon Fire Department Station Number 2 at 12361 Paseo del Este Boulevard this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. No appointment necessary. So the dream was to build your very own law practice. Be your own boss. Call all the shots. But have things like billing, HR, timekeeping, and all the other management stuff turned your dream into a nightmare? Take charge of your practice with Lexicon. We're the intersection of practice management software and legal support services for your firm. You'll get more billable and livable hours back. Lexicon marks the spot for all your practice management needs. Visit lexiconservices.com slash intersection to get the whole story or schedule a demo. Liberty Mutual Insurance Company presents and Doug. Don't you just love the smell of old books? Shh, this is a library. Sorry, ma'am. We're looking for a book titled Liberty Mutual Customizes Your Car Insurance So You Only Pay for What You Need. I don't think we carry that, but check nonfiction. It really does devour literature. Please leave. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. If I'm going to work from my home office, I need my home office to work for me. It's possible at Staples. To be most productive, my home office needs to have everything my office office has. Also possible because your local Staples store has the tools, tech, and furniture you need to get work done from home. And right now, you can save up to $100 on select chairs to put the finishing touch on your home office. Explore what's new at Staples, the working and learning store. Ends 3-5, in-store only while supplies last. You could save big when you bundle your home and auto with Progressive, but when we just come out and say it, it feels like it falls a bit flat. So we're going to tap into human emotion, first with some music. Then in a serious tone, I'll say, save big when you bundle your home and auto with Progressive. And even though it was about saving money with Progressive, we'll fade out the music so you know it was poignant. Wow, powerful stuff. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Discount not available in all states or situations. Donna from Louisiana. The storm just hit, and we went from donating to the food bank to needing it. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. El Paso's News Radio, 690 KTSM. And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By M1 EP Management Corporation, 915-592-4549. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. Check out celebrationsofourmountains.org. They're touring the Tortugas. (laughs) Tortugas, easy for me to say. Tortugas Mountain (laughs) Mineral Collection hike is tomorrow, Sunday, March the 6th. Get a hold of them at 915-525-7364, celebrationofourmountains.org. Monterey Asset Management has changed their name and it's now M1EP Management Corp. And they are Superior Management Services Organization. Visit their website at m the using the numeral 1ep.com for more information or call them at 915-592-4549. And if you're looking to sell, buy, or rent a home, then you need to call 915 915- 588-1850 and talk with Patrick Tuttle of Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate. In this crazy real estate market, you need an expert. So call Patrick at 915-588-1850. Good guy. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, hey, right? like that with the crazy market though. Is- oh, it's, uh, he know, <laughs> he's, he's, he's good at that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Enrique Guay, Guay, hmm, Guajardo. 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 I'm, I'll get there eventually. Guajardo. But I, I look at it on paper and then I don't get, I don't get there. I'm sorry, Enrique. But you were the owner of the stash house. You were talking about your plans. We've got a couple of phone calls we'll get to in a second. But you're talking about the plans you have there, a restaurant. Yes. Uh, so how we divided uh, this project into three phases. So the first phase, we said uh, we talk, we're going to restore the house, how it used to be. Then the second phase, you know, um, get with the architects and have, have them uh, make a, a layout, put this back on code. 
and then the third phase, you know, open the the site, right? Open yeah. the restaurant. And what kind of food are you going to have? So it's going to be uh, Mexican food. Actually, real Mexican. Action, yes. We're trying not to go with a Tex-Mex, you know, that we know. The border we, type, yeah. The, the, the food that we, we, we eat here in El Paso. How would your enchiladas be different? Well, it, it, it all begins with the, the type of sauces they use ah, and the type okay. of corn tortilla. If, if, if you talk about enchiladas or chilaquiles, all that. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it all, it all the, the, it depends on the sauces, you know. Fair enough. Back uh, more in the south, they use uh, a little bit more spices. Uh, okay. Condiments. Uh, restaurants coming. Yeah. Right now, it's an historic location. Um, you don't have it open on a regular basis? No, it, right now it's, it's closed for the public. It's it's. Uh, you may get some calls. Yeah, you I may mean, get some I, inquiries. I, I would be happy to to open the site and for anyone who wants to go and, and take a look at it. Is there uh, an easy way to find you? I'm down the corner. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm always I'm always in downtown. I may have uh, other projects that I'm working on as we speak, and I'm always there. Okay, fair enough. I think okay. the ironic thing is if you've made it a restaurant, you know, in the United States, we have a big thing with Washington, President Washington from the beginning of the country slept here. That was always everybody's house. Washington slept here. Here you can go eat where Pancho Villa lived. You yeah, can eat well, he, the same place he did. He used to hang out and do all kinds of things. I got a couple got phone one. calls here. We have Lawrence on the phone. Lawrence, you're on the radio. What's up? Oh, uh, just, a, just a couple of things. Um, yeah, I've spent a lot of time down at the stash house. And always walking around during Guito, uh, inside the fences, outside the fences. It's a place of uh, fascination of mine. And I was just wondering um, a couple of things. Uh, oh, and we used to do readings at the Rock House. And, and I knew the owner of the Rock House. I used to bring out-of-town writers. And we'd do some uh, wonderful uh you know, literary readings and poetry readings sure. down there at the Rock House. Great um, area, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was a fantastic place. And I knew the owner, and um, I'm just kind of, uh, it's fantastic that it's been sold. But, you know, what's the update on all down there in, in, in during Guido? Do, are they are they really still going to put in a, um, once again, a, an arena there? Because uh, my thought was always that that whole area should absolutely be a historical location. And, and people from all over the world would come there to hang out and, and see the really uh, incredible history there. All right, Lawrence, thanks for the call. I'm going to move on. And uh, Bernie started to answer that question. Bernie, what do you got? There's a lot of rumors flying around right now that there's a settlement in the offing uh, between the, the plaintiff and so on. The city's going to just back away from it. And then we're hearing also that there's a, a movement afoot to float another bond that would uh, come up with, uh, I think, $200 million to add to the money that was on the original bond from 2012, which would have enough money to build the arena. So there's so much going on, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, there's no Nothing's finite determination yeah. Yeah, determination as to what's going to happen there. There'll be solid gold seats at that price? <laughs> solid gold seats. Yeah, two of them. The, uh, yeah, so it, it, you know, we're keeping our fingers crossed that the, uh, the city will see fit to work with us on a program to make that a historic destination as opposed to uh, an athlete's destination or I should say a, a events destination. Well, I agree with Lawrence. That should be historic and it should be maintained that way. Well, you know, the interesting thing about that, and I, I know I, I was uh, attacked vehemently by some politicians because of my position on it, that I was opposed to the arena. I said, no, no. I voted for it. I was opposed to that location. Right. Uh, and we had come up with a handful of suggestions as where it could go, one of which would be the Asarco property because now there's nothing going on there. And yeah, I mean, uh, perfect you know, place. For yeah, the university is not uh, is not going to take advantage of that property uh, as as we've heard. So why not there? It's easy access to I ten gives a lot of visibility to I ten travelers going to or through El Paso. A lot of access. Yeah, and then we had thought about the Abo Stadium at one time, but now that's a water park because that has easy access. It's close to Fort Bliss. So there's places that are more amenable to uh, in egress and ingress. This city's not in line with doing history. No, no, and, th and that's the, that's the really irritating thing because when bernie and i were out in january we went for a meeting texas historical foundation and we were down in uh, new Braunfels and looking at how they preserve their towns yeah. uh even in austin they've done this thing and they've done houston it's great and it's frustrating because they see it done and you see how many people are there and how many active business tourists go there place. yeah el I paso mean, it, could be a major tourist location even a small area like bryan and college station yeah i mean yeah. they've done a lot in those areas and, right. and there's a well, tons of people there well san antonio has over a dozen antonio. people working in their historic preservation office 
and they have done a magnificent job in preserving buildings. So if, if they don't want to take the whole building down, they gut the inside, they keep the exterior so it looks historical, and they build inside of it. And they've done a lot of that kind of stuff. And we El Paso could, could easily make a fortune doing yeah, this. Yeah, and their hotels are full, and they're full of full-paying customers. They're yeah. not full of government employees. Or, or occasional basketball fans. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't get me started on that. <laughs> don't make me dribble on the court. <laughs> what, what do you got, Andrew? <laughs> well, just kind of on that conversation here, as it keeps moving forward, of course, this is a lot of legal courts here. But I just want to point out there was a recent news article uh, from our news partners over at CBS4 Local. El Paso County judge says new study shows El Paso needs to promote heritage tourism. So there is some interesting differences of opinions when it comes to local government on these and that's things. the county saying that the mm-hmm. city the problem is if you had a vision the next guy in, in elected behind you has to have the same vision and that's changes every time the, yeah. the our city change. manager has to have that vision so we that went be to nice? city management and he really really needs to understand they're that. losing a huge bet by not promoting the history and, and, and looking at the stash house today yeah. that's one example of many and Durangita would be a great place to have a lot of little museums, as Bernie's talking yeah, about. And then sometimes we use the analogy the Tombstone gets three to six million people visiting it a year. It's like uh, 40 miles off of I 10. Yeah, you got to get They've there. They've got 30 seconds of history. We have 30 years of just Old West history. Plus, we have all the other history and culture of this community. It makes you crazy, doesn't it? I mean, oh, crazier. Oh, it's great. I was talking to one more phone call. Jorge, what's on your mind, Jorge? Jack, and I agree with you with respect to the issue that Lawrence has addressed with you and uh, your guest in the radio audience. But um, I wanted to comment, Enrique, on uh, to be a staff house. Uh, so before I do, I wanted to uh, commemorate uh, tomorrow is the uh, Valley Standard Crockett in the Alamo. And I wanted to say that uh, my great grandfather, Petro Alcalto, he lives out there in um, Paso de Norte and uh, Pancho Villa. He was looking for uh, funds, and uh, it happened that my great grandfather had that that he wanted, and uh, he had to flee my great grandfather in 1919. And in doing so, he had to stash all the gold that he had on the premises behind a wall. And years and years later, I learned this from a cousin, property owners. They opened up the wall by chance, and there they found all that gold that was stashed there in that house. Oh, that's that's a fabulous story, Jorge. Uh, well, thank you for the call. Appreciate that, and uh, you keep in touch. All right. I will. Thank you. Thanks for calling. Appreciate that. Well, there's a lot of a lot of Pancho Villa stashing stuff in places, and we're talking about the Pancho Villa stash house. Got an historical marker out front. And it's an interesting place to go visit. And at some point, you're going to have that open as a restaurant. We can, we can, that is correct. Yes. All right, be fun to yeah, do. we want we want the, the people or the tourists, you know, from all over the country or the world to come and visit this place. Yeah. I mean, there's not many left, especially, you know, the Adobe structure. Well, the coffin house is going to be a you were going to do that as a rental, like a bed and breakfast. Or not that, a bed and breakfast, yes. uh, uh, B&B. Mm-hmm. Uh, BRB, I guess, is the one they refer Airbnb. to. Airbnb. Airbnb. You're talking yes. C-O- Air bed and breakfast. C O F F I N, but that's a guy's name. That's that was his name, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, not not a coffin. There's he was not an undertaker. It's <laughs> not a really big box that people live in. No, it's a, right, a no, house. No. It's a Victorian house. And it's, it's on the other end of the same block. It's on the other side, yes. On oh, that's on Overland Street. Well, thank you kindly for doing what you can to help renovate El Paso and its history. Appreciate that. Uh and Enrique got Guajardo. Guajardo. Am I getting better there? <laughs> yes. I work on my throat here with that. Yeah, thing. we got people here helping you pronounce it. Uh, Margie Benton put it in. She goes, Guajardo. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There Appreciate you go. that. Yes. Phonetic. And if, if they want to find you, should they come to the gas station on the corner? <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm actually on Overland Street, basically on, on the at coffin house, on the Victorian house so most you, of the day. So you're around there. Because I think you're going to have to set up some way to let people go in there and, and on a regular basis. But that's, that's a near future thing, I hope. All right, taking a break here on the El Paso Richard Radio Show, and we should be back in just a moment. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com. M numeral one EP.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate. Call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. My new cafe is always packed at lunch. Thing is we need a dinner rush to keep up with expenses. So I whipped up my own radio campaign at iHeartAdBuilder.com to advertise our weekly specials. Now dinner reservations are booked weeks in advance, and things are really cooking. A custom radio ad from iHeart Ad Builder is the fast, affordable way to drive customers to your business. Put the power of radio to work for you. Get started now at iHeartAdBuilder.com. 
Susan, it's so great to finally be able to get together again. Oh, it sure is. And I really appreciate you picking up the bill. I'm happy to. I've got the extra cash. Since we've all been driving so much more again, I've been using GetUpside, the free gas app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the GetUpside app? Yes, up to 25 cents a gallon. Cash back every time I buy gas. Does that actually add up to anything? I'll make 200 to 300 dollars this year. Wow, that's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free GetUpside app now. Download the free GetUpside app now in the App Store or Google Play to save up to 25 cents a gallon when you buy gas. Use promo code FUEL for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's up to 50 cents a gallon on your next fill up. You can cash out anytime right to your bank, PayPal, or an e gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code FUEL for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code FUEL. Fellow Texans, play it safe. Protect yourself and your family with a free COVID-19 vaccination for adults and children. Get your free vaccine at Horizon Fire Department Station Number 2 at 12361 Paseo del Este Boulevard this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. No appointment necessary. Sometimes it feels like your business is going 100 miles an hour, barely keeping up. Dell Technologies Advisors have the Windows PCs and tech you need to help you get past whatever's in front of you. Call an advisor today at 877-ASK-DELL. A start to a simpler experience with Windows 11 Pro. Hey, Sullivan here from the Ad Home with Gary Sullivan Network. Well, we're planning on a really big DIY weekend. We'll take your calls about your home painting, patching, general fix-up that you may have those problem areas around your home. We can help. Clopay Garage Doors, they'll also join us. They'll be talking about Hurricane Code Garage Doors. Sure hope you can join us. At Home with Gary Sullivan, Saturdays at 1 p.m. right here on News Radio 690 KTSM. News Radio 690 KTSM. And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By M1 EP Management Corporation, 915-592-4549. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. All right, we've got more history to talk about here. I'm going to let you know that Rick Kern's music podcast is called Talk and Rock Radio. Go there, talkandrockradio.com. Your turn. Well- Okay, <laughs> we will have one another sponsor we wish to remind you about, and that's Mission Del Rey Southwest, where you can take your out-of-town visitors for Southwest souvenirs, jewelry, gifts, and decor. They also have a clearance area, which features scratch and dent items, as well as closeouts. Go to missiondelrey.com or visit their 12,000-square-foot showroom at 1421 North Lee Trevino, Suite A7, and their phone number is 915-440-2140, and don't forget to mention the El Paso History Radio Show for your discount at checkout. Hey, good people out there. You got all kinds of neat souvenirs and beyond. Have you been there, Enrique? No. Oh, yeah. you need to go. You might find some items just as, you know, decorations for inside the, the restaurant That's and true. The buildings. Yeah, all oh, kinds of stuff out I'll there. I'll give wow. you the Trevino yes. and neat, Pelicano. Neat Great stuff. All right. Uh, the things to talk about here on this uh, radio show this morning, we want to talk a little bit about the TV show that came out. And it was on the History Channel last Tuesday night. I think they have some clips of it now on their website. Andrew, where'd you find those? You found them somewhere. Yeah, over on the History Channel website, they have some little teasers, little fillers. I was showing it to some people, and they were like, oh, wow, now i got to go watch this whole thing. So not sure if it's up on, like, History on Demand just yet, but I'm assuming it will be soon. I think they yeah, do that. They're pretty quick on it. It seems to me like it's just a day or two afterwards. The name of it is actually Beyond Oak Island, and it's a matter of uh, – looking in, in those episodes we can get those and look back in the history and beyond oak island the most recent episode was tuesday night and it was called poncho villa's plunder and they talked all about poncho villa bernie was a historian at the beginning of the show enrique and i were throughout the show pretending to be treasure hunters i never told him i was a treasure hunter <laughs> you started as <laughs> historian radio show host and by the end you were a treasure they hunter. call me a treasure hunter. I mean, yep. that, but, but it would change, yeah. But that's the nature of that program. Oh, that's what they do. Sensational. So, Ricky, Enrique, you're really the treasure hunter. You still, you still finding stuff? Uh, I stopped. We stopped digging after they left, but oh. uh, I'm sure there's more stuff buried there. I bet there is. 
Uh, we have a comment coming in from uh, on the phone by Raymond. Raymond, you're on the radio. Make it brief, but what you got? Uh, yes, sir. i just like to say thank you for the outstanding job you guys have done in promoting the history of El Paso. And oh. that our city council doesn't take enough interest to do such. Well, I appreciate and, uh, your thoughts. And I, like I said, thank you for the outstanding job you guys have done. All right. Beautiful. And if you get a chance to vote for somebody or tell them why you're voting, make sure that they tell the city manager, we need to promote the heritage and the history of this town. We can make a lot of money as tourists would like to come see this, but they need to know about it. They promote that plaza theater and the seats they fill down there. Bless their hearts. Do that. But also promote the history outside of El Paso. Thanks a lot for your, for your call. And uh, thank you for letting us know that, uh, yes, okay. we, we've been working thank on it. Thank you much. Yes, sir. Okay. You, you take care. And we have been working on this. Yeah. Well, listen, you and I have been doing this for uh, decades. Oh, forever and ever. <laughs> and it, it's, it's been a labor of love, basically. And it's it's been fun in the sense that we're helping people discover their own history. Like I said, Bernie and I are not originally from El Paso. We've been here 34 years, but we've fallen in love mm-hmm. with the history. And it's so great to talk to people. I said, I grew up here. I never knew all that. And so you get more people interested, and they start having a lot more pride in their community when they realize how, how important this town was to the growth of the country. And also, we've got, Andrew, you got something? Yeah, but actually on that point here, uh, interesting comment coming in over on the social media. Marisa Villegas Ramirez saying, good morning, El Paso. My original hometown currently lives in Northern California, but looking to relocate here and is very appreciative of having found this show and specifically wondering if we do have an archive where we have all of this stuff and you find a lot of it on our Facebook page and also other social media pages to go back and see some of our, within the last couple of years, episodes about this because we definitely want people to know and understand and appreciate El Paso history. Also, yeah, YouTube has an archive about the last year and a half, and so does Facebook. And then we've got some radio-only archives on ephistory.com. Check that out, and you'll see a bunch of archives sitting there. And I'm going to be posting the link to the show you can watch online. I just found it online. So it's I'm now online, to- the whole show? Yep. Oh, bless you. And that'll be on the Facebook page, El Paso History yeah, Radio. Give me a few minutes to get it there. Yeah, excellent. I, po- I posted on Facebook, I think it was Thursday. Yeah. And they have the whole show? Mm-hmm. Oh, excellent. All right. Yeah. So if you want to see the entire TV show that the History Channel did last Tuesday night about the Stash House and Pancho Villa, it's now on, uh, on the link will be on Facebook here shortly, El Paso History Radio Show. And what, what's the point here of talking so much about the Mexican Revolution and, and Pancho Villa? And my, my contention, let you guys see what you think, is that the Mexican Revolution is and was a huge part of El Paso's history. Your thoughts? Very much so. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, both sides, the federalities and the revolutionaries, uh, you had people that were screaming across, streaming across the border to get away from one side or the other. And uh, that created uh, a lineage of families from Mexico that's is perpe- you know, in perpetuity. A large portion of El Paso's population is descendant from people who did that. Mm-hmm. And so many people have grandfathers or grandmothers or whoever, great grandfathers that knew Pancho Villa or got out of town because of Pancho mm-hmm. Villa, et cetera, et cetera. And so now we're talking today about the Stash House down on Leon Street and the fact that it's a very historic location. You've got a marker out front mm-hmm. explaining on a lot of detail on, on the, the, the taking of, of stuff. In about, about a minute, Enrique, could you explain what's on that marker? Yes, sure. Well, it, it, it is very simple. The marker tells you uh, that that house w- was raided back in 1915. 15, 15. 15, and that they, uh, the U.S. Customs confiscated uh, cash. It's uh, the plaque says five hundred thousand dollars, and you know we know that five hundred thousand dollars back in that days is a couple millions of dollars nowadays. And, and a bunch of jewelry, and and you found in the stash house some places under the floor where obviously something had been stashed. Right, and thus the name of the stash house. Exactly. Enrique, I appreciate you doing this. We got another hour to talk about this. There's the marker itself, and I just set it up on Facebook. So if you want to read it, you can go freeze that and take a look at it. But it's an interesting history, an interesting story. And again, it's part of El Paso history. And that's why we we dwell on this kind of stuff. And it's in the historic Duranguito neighborhood. We can even talk more about that. Take it a break. You're coming back after the news. We'll do this again. Yes, we do. And we've got more details to tell you about the TV show. Because the TV show was uh, out there and 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 also helped help publicize El Paso. Oh, it was wonderful. That sounds, I think yeah. it worked out well for that. All right. See you after the news right here on the El Paso History Radio Show. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the El Paso History Show. There's another hour to go, so please stay tuned. This hour is brought to you by Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, home of the one and only Margarita. 
by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive. By M1 EP Management Corporation, 915-592-4549. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. We'll be right back after the news, right here on News Radio 690, KTSM, El Paso. First, we decide where we want to go. Then we need to know the best way to get there. Hi, my name's Adam Barada. I'm the owner of Advantage Gold. We're the highest rated precious metals firm in the country. We teach people how to own physical gold and silver. Now, we've won the Best of TrustLink Award four years in a row because we educate our clients on how to buy gold and silver the right way. We don't pay celebrity spokespeople millions of dollars. We'd rather pass that value on to you. Call 800-900-8000 and speak with one of our experts. We'll send you a free gold kit along with my latest number one national best-selling book, The Great Devaluation. Call 800-900-8000. That's 800-900-8000. Get the best information, the best process, the best service, the best value. Call Advantage Gold at 800-900-8000. Call 800-900-8000. What's done more to improve overall health and wellness, modern medicine, or personal hygiene? Actually, it's both. But considering that bathing went mainstream in the 1800s and brushing your teeth in the 1900s, isn't it time for something new, like cleaning your nose? After all, your nose is the body's air filter for trapping dirt and germs, the first line of defense against allergens, bacteria, and viruses from getting into your lungs. But how do you clean your nose? With Navage. Navage isn't medicine, it's more like plumbing. Navaj uses powered suction to pull saline in one nostril to the very back of the nose where germs can get trapped and multiply, and then out the other nostril, flushing out mucus and microbes so you can breathe better, sleep deeper, snore less, and stay healthier. Join over 2 million others and find out for yourself how refreshing and easy to use Navaj is. At Navaj.com, Walgreens, CBS, Rite Aid, Bed Bath, and Target. Navaj. Clean nose, healthy life. I'm Julie Ryan. Ukrainian President Zelensky is urging the U.S. to establish a no-fly zone over Ukraine and impose harsher Russian sanctions. During a Zoom call with dozens of U.S. senators today, Zelensky called for sanctions targeting Russia's energy sector and additional military assistance. The International Committee of the Red Cross is saying that civilian evacuations from Mariupol and Volnavaka are postponed until further notice. Ongoing Russian shelling was preventing a safe evacuation for citizens trapped in the two southeastern cities. The announcement comes after Russia was accused of violating a ceasefire agreement that would allow those affected by the conflict to escape. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is reaffirming U.S. support for NATO during a visit to Poland. The people of Poland know how important it is to defend freedom, so do Americans. And we will stand together as in support of Ukraine. He also praised Poland for being the leader in accepting Ukrainian refugees as they flood across the border. Tesla's Elon Musk calls for an expansion of the U.S. oil and gas development sector, Brad Siegel reports. In a tweet Friday, Musk said, hate to say it, but we need to increase oil and gas output immediately. The Tesla and SpaceX industrialist also tweeted, sustainable energy solutions simply cannot react instantaneously to make up for Russian oil and gas exports. Musk also acknowledged that his electric car company Tesla would be negatively impacted by the move, but he says extraordinary times demand extraordinary measures. Russia's invasion has disrupted energy energy markets worldwide, and the Biden administration has come under fire from both sides of the aisle for not doing more to focus on American energy production. The 2022 Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race is kicking off today with a ceremonial start in Anchorage. The 11-mile start takes mushers through the city streets while spectators look on from the sidelines. The official start to the race will be in Willow on Sunday and ends 1,000 miles later in Nome. You're listening to the latest on NBC News Radio. From the KFOX 14 Severe Weather Center, this is Chief Meteorologist Sandra Diaz. The first of a series of systems has come through. Now, Saturday's winds will still be windy, just not as strong, but without the rain, we'll continue to see some of that wind lift the dust. So more patchy blowing dust remains in the forecast your Saturday with another system coming in on Sunday, bringing back even stronger winds and more dust. 
iHeartRadio Earth is here with little tips for a healthier planet. It sure feels good to step into a warm car after letting it heat up for a few minutes. However, this practice wastes gas, increases emissions, and pollutes the air. Limit idling your car to no more than three minutes to save money at the gas station and improve air quality. Brought to you by iHeartRadio Earth and the National Environmental Education Foundation. To find more tips for smarter, sustainable living or to take action in your own community, go to iHeartRadio.com earth. Have you thought about getting dental implants? Has someone told you that implants cost three, four, five, six thousand dollars a tooth? Here's something much better to think about. Affordable dental implants from 1995implants.com. The El Paso Dental Office, where beautiful, top-quality, long-lasting dental implants are as low as $1,995 per tooth. That price includes the implant, abutment, and crown, which many other places charge extra for. At 1995implants.com, we also offer a free consultation, free standard x-rays, and convenient financing. 1995implants.com. You're going to love your new smile, and your friends and family will be telling you how great you look. Best of all, your dental implants are very affordable if you come to 1995implants.com. For more information, see our website, 1995implants.com. That's 1995implants.com. Se habla español. Texans, play it safe. Protect yourself and your family with a free COVID-19 vaccination for adults and children. Get your free vaccine at Horizon Fire Department Station Number 2 at 12361 Paseo del Este Boulevard this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. No appointment necessary. I'm Larry Gelwix, the getaway guru and host of The Travel Show, and I want to give you a free cruise courtesy of Morris Columbus Travel, Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, and News Radio KTSM AM 690. There's nothing to buy, but you must enter the drawing online no later than March 15th at TravelShowPrize.com. That's TravelShowPrize.com. And join me on The Travel Show every Sunday at 7 p.m. Children who grow up in poverty are part of a destructive cycle. At Child Fund International, we find this unacceptable. In 25 countries, we are vigorously fighting poverty and improving the lives of children and their families. Learn more at childfund.org. News Radio 690, KTSM El Paso. News Radio 690 KTSM presents the second hour of the El Paso History Show with documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk and historian Melissa Sargent, streaming live at KTSMRadio.com. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. By Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, home of the one and only Margarita. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive. By M1 EP Management Corporation, 915-592-4549. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino, with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. And now, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. It's the top of the hour, too, and we're going to talk about an El Paso History Moment produced by Melissa Sargent for the El Paso History Alliance page on Facebook. And her story today is about how Mexican President Santayana went to Long Island, Long Island, New York. No, Staten Island. Oh, Staten Island. Don't, oh, oh, don't mix those two. Oh, no. It's just <laughs> some island in New York and planned his return to Mexico after the Texas Revolution. From Remember the Alamo to Thanks for the Chicrets. During the 10 years that passed since the end of the Texas War for Independence in 1836, the infamous General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana lived comfortably in exile in Staten Island in New York. There, Santa Ana became friends with fellow Mason and former President Andrew Jackson and Gilbert L. Thompson, the son-in-law of the governor of New York. But Santa Ana wasn't just spending his time basking in his fame amongst the New York elite. He was actively plotting to take back Mexico. So when he returned to his beloved Mexico in an attempt to return to power, he was captured by the Mexican military and sentenced to death. Upon hearing the news of Santa Ana's capture, his friend Gilbert Thompson sailed his schooner to Mexico and smuggled Santa Ana out of Mexico and back to Staten Island. Undaunted, Santa Ana continued planning to recapture Mexico, but he would need money to amass an army. And where would those funds come from? Santa Ana as a child liked to chew the sap from a sapodilla tree which had a rubbery texture and thought it might just be a usable material to make carriage tires. 
while this plan never came to fruition, Santa Ana's aide, Thomas Adams, adapted the same chewy substance into a sweet gum and named it after the Mexican word chicle, meaning sticky stuff. Hence, Chiclet's gum was invented. More history next time on El Paso History Moments. I'm Melissa Sargent for the El Paso History Alliance. That story went all over the place. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, that's my mic on? Yeah. Oh, there. Okay, sorry about that. No, uh, I just thought with the, you know, this week was the birth, or no, well, the beginning yeah. of independence for Texas. And I just thought we'd have something kind of fun. And to see the irony of it where Santa Ana went from here in Texas when he was exiled from Mexico, went to France and he went to Staten Island. But I had no idea that he, he was actually buddies with Andrew Jackson, the man that and basically, yeah, kicked him out of the country. And, yeah. and okay, you do this for the uh, Facebook page. Oh, yes. Rob, sorry about that. I lost track where we we're at. Uh, I got so wrapped up in that one. Okay, what I, we do is we produce this for the El Paso History Alliance, and uh, they have some great Facebook pages that uh, we want to talk about, and that's the El Paso History Alliance Facebook page. features El Paso and the region's historic architecture and culture and is managed by Max Grossman and Mark Stone. And then we have Remembering El Paso Win, which is El Paso's premier history Facebook page featuring hundreds and thousands of pictures and stories. And uh, the page is managed by Barbara Given Bainey and her team of volunteer editors. Good crowd there. And the, uh, she's the chief admin and the owner. And uh, you also have admins of Rick Duncan, Rick Nachra, Mary Margaret Smith. That's Margaret Smith. Yes. And uh, Paul Louie, Ben Vincent, and Ken Weiss. We thank them for their volunteer work. And if you really want to plug into some El Paso history, that's a good place to go. All right. We got these guys in here, and uh, one of his en Enrique with a great last name, and it is Guajardo. Guajardo. I knew, <laughs> I knew you'd know that. He says that really well, doesn't he? And <laughs> Bernie, Bernie Hill, a last name of Sargento. There you go, Sargento. I use a cheese named after you. <laughs> yes, there is. Family yeah. cheese. And yeah. locks. Locks and uh, That's cheese. right. Yeah. You do that as well. well I, they, uh, where do you want to go with this whole thing? Because, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff to talk well, about. Well, just to touch back quickly on the Santa Ana story with the chiclets. I mean, how many of us have been on the bridge and you've got a little kids sitting in the stand next to the car going, chiclets, chiclets. Oh, yeah. And I thought, well, this is kind of a cute relationship. I bought a lot when of I those saw that story, years, I went, yeah. oh, yeah, Melissa, we got to share this one. There we go. Yeah. So where do you want to go on the story of the Stash House and the TV show? Because the TV show that came out, we're talking about the History Channel, mm -hmm. and you now have got a link there going, uh, Melissa, on... Uh... Yes, on, I put it on our both the live Facebook feed as well as the um, uh, the, the regular Facebook page you can find there, and I can also go to YouTube and do that. I and also, there's the historic marker now on the Facebook page, and uh, the Stash House is downtown on Leon Street, a very historic place. We talk about this because the Mexican Revolution was very historic in El Paso's mm -hmm. history. And there's a, now there's a physical place you can go look at. It's in a neighborhood down there called Durangito. And it's an interesting place to be continually looked at in the future because you're going to, Enrique, you're going to keep pushing that as, a, as a, a location for history. Yes, for sure. We, we won't stop until it's open. Okay. And, and not right away, but at some point you have a restaurant and a museum in there. That is right. That's the plan. Okay. That's a plan. Yeah. And Bernie, you want to talk further about some of the, uh, the, location there uh well it's an interesting location we own uh, that particular building when it was put up in the late 1890s uh prior to that there were a number of buildings uh, uh apartments that were built some of which are still standing and there was uh, also uh, several car repair facilities and car parts uh, uh places where you could buy vehicle parts you got you're looking at the 1880s 1890s you got cars and buggies. So there was a combination of the carriage uh, repair shops and things and, and car repair shops. That's a very historic area of downtown El Paso. Yeah, it is. It's really fun. And the, the whole idea there would be to keep it going um, as history. Mm -hmm. And you, we had a, you mentioned that there may be another bond election coming up to find the rest of the money. That's the rumor going the arena. around that they're trying to fund another 200 million to uh, continue the arena. Why don't they put it somewhere else? Well, I, I served, I was honored to serve on the bond oversight or overview committee for eight years from 2012 until a couple of years ago when I more than termed out. And uh, that was one of the questions that kept coming up. Why are we continually spending money off that bond? Uh, and now that the economy has changed a little bit, those bonds aren't worth as much as they used to be. Uh, why don't we be more constructive with that money? And I know the mayor has talked about it and maybe using the money to uh, retrofit the convention center, bring it up to uh, a 21st century uh, mode uh, or relocate it to somewhere else. And so, you know, we're really, I, I'm still on the bandwagon. I want to make sure that it goes somewhere else. You know, I, I'm looking at some of Enrique's plans for the corner house, the old uh, rock house and what he's got planned there. And wouldn't it be fun to have people walking by there 24 hours, well, I should say during the daytime and evening, and they're stopping for refreshments, some food, 
and then checking out all the history. Uh, but if that's not, you know, if the arena's there, you're not going to have a lot of foot traffic down there in the daytime unless there's a game going on or whatever event that they have. Well, I think it'd be a good idea to learn El Paso history and pr promote the city for it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Enrique, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with uh, That's why we're uh, you know, trying to, you know, at the end establish, you know, let people know that, that how much, how rich in history we are in here in El Paso. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not only based on, the, you know, on the Mexican side uh, history, but, you know, it, it also, it, you know, involves in, in the U.S. as well with General Pershing coming in here and visit Pancho Villa. Oh, yeah. You know, he, you know. I think he's General. right over your shoulder there looking at you. Uh, yeah, he is in that <laughs> <Right>. picture. <laughs> yeah, he's got him back. He is. I mean, he's, he was he was a key person in, 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 in Villa's um, revolution because he was the supplier, the weapon supplier. Who was? Uh, General Pershing. Or the U.S. But he supplied weapons to whom? To Pancho Villa. General Pershing did? Well, well until they had the falling out. Oh, yeah. yeah. But at one point, they were no longer buddies. No. In that picture, yeah. obviously. But at the beginning, they yeah. were. Yeah. Okay. They, even, they, just, they even put a statue on, on the Camino Real Hotel, General Pershing and Pancho Villa shaking hands. Interesting history there. Let's talk about the... Uh, the oh, and then Pancho named his fighting rooster after the president of the United States. Wilson. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so the the the, the history is amazing, and it, if we don't promote this town for the history, we're missing a huge bet. And you know, we, I'll say that till we're gone, which is in the next two weeks. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> that's uh, the purpose of the stash house. You know, we also um, we keep forgetting something very important um, in schools nowadays. They don't promote much history, so people are growing up without you know lo we're, we're losing the history of yeah. you know, of, especially from El Paso. So that the stash house is also as a restaurant, but we wanna we wanna involve you know the the teachers to come and kind of promote the history of El Paso to the to the students. What's gonna be in the museum? Tell me what you found when you went around looking for stuff in that. Well, the place. stash house is gonna be full of uh, um, items from museums that they're they're gonna be donating from the museums to us. Oh, so we're gonna have uh, unique and and uh, original items from back in the revolution. What about things you found there? Well, we have found a couple of, you know, old bills, uh, coins, uh, cannonballs, uh, shoes, you know, books. bottles. Some books. Books. Some uh, telegraphs that they used to, how they used to communicate back in the days. And when the TV show came along, they were looking with metal detectors and also ground penetrating radar. Right. And what did they find uh, when they did that? A couple of coins, uh, bottles, uh, one button from a from one of the general suits has an eagle engraved on it, mm -hmm. and that's about it. I mean, they didn't have too much. I mean, the budget wasn't you know enough to keep digging, you know. But there's there's a lot more to dig. Well, they but, mentioned they might come back. Any? Do you think they will? They wanted to come. They want to come. Uh, okay. They 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 felt that they you know there's a lot more to dig. In the patios. Well, they're gonna have to dig up your whole place. <laughs> <laughs> you may get that it's basement not a small back. small place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you have a basement coming back. <laughs> basement real fast. Well, what they did was they they came in with a uh, I guess it was a, a, a machine, a, a, not a road grader, but a, a, a backhoe. A backhoe, you call mm -hmm. it. And uh, and the host Marty Lagina ran the thing. Yeah, I didn't know he yeah. could do that, and I, I was amazed to see him do that. But he jumped on that thing and started digging holes for the ground radar and the uh, metal detector people had located things in your backyard. Right. And um, they found a couple of interesting things, the coins you mentioned, but also there was a hole inside the house that they, they created. Tell us about that. Well, yeah, um, the, the equipment that they brought, the GPS and the scanners they brought into the house, uh, one of the, the scanners uh, was hitting on, on, on that hole that they, they built, uh, they made. Uh, but we didn't find anything in there. It was just a, a piece of mesh, mesh, whatever. Wire, you know, wire, wire mesh. Wire mesh. And uh, we they they move on to the next spot, you know, because they they did find a couple of, of spots that they wanted to dig. How many holes did they put in the floor? Uh, one uh, inside the house. They yeah. they just did one hole. Just one. Okay. It was like yeah. four the foot restaurant outside, right? Yes. And then on the patio, they dig uh, you know a couple holes, and and they were interesting because some the 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 GPS was when when they were uh, scanning the 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 hall in between the two properties. They they found that there was kind of 
there was a like hollow parts a void a void yeah so that no. that leads uh to a it could be a tunnel and what they that hole they put in the floor melissa is about four foot by four yeah i foot. saw the picture of it oh that's huge yeah. now yeah. we've stepped over it a number of times when we had events there oh yeah. <laughs> well, that's cover, right i forgot we were there when we still yeah, some, yeah. yeah. You, you 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 didn't fill it in completely did you put a, a boards over it we, we that's what that's uh we did that so far right now yeah. uh we're we're planning on leaving that that exposed to the public so people can see where the history channel was digging <laughs> it's amazing that what they pulled off in a few days and they were here for like about a week the, yeah, that is right we're and, gonna call it the whole house <laughs> it's got so many holes in it <laughs> and in history you can dig the tv yeah. show was 42 minutes and not much on the house i mean they had a lot of setup a lot of other conversations anyway taking a break here on the show what's going on, on facebook anybody uh, right now I'm trying to get something said. I, I'm put, trying to post to YouTube with that link for the show, but, uh, Andrew's probably got a better idea what's going on there. You got something, Andrew? Yeah. A lot of conversation about, uh, some of the ideas being talked about here, such as, uh, relocation and things here, uh, about people also chiming in from all over moon rain over on the YouTube specifically saying on the restaurant idea, when I go on vacation, I want someone to cook for me. So makes sense. We're talking That's about the restaurant. Good idea. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and, and you'll have a and b down the street there at the coffin house bed and breakfast yes that um, is going on right now so actually that house that, uh, that uh, i'm going to tell a little bit of story of that house that house was built in back in the 1880s uh, and it was it's the first wood house and the oldest house standing in duranguito area wow uh the house is built from from the first train they came to El Paso with wood. Wood, yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. It's an amazing little house. It's really, really neat. And you were doing, last time I was there, you were doing some great, great things to it. And you were telling us about your ideas. I was like, wow. Enrique I'll Guajardo. Yes, sir. That's we'll him. come back and stay. Thank <laughs> you for being here on the show. we got more to go here. Stay, stay tuned here on the El Paso History Radio Show. Back in a moment. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. Susan, it's so great to finally be able to get together again. Oh, it sure is. And I really appreciate you picking up the bill. I'm happy to. I've got the extra cash. Since we've all been driving so much more again, I've been using GetUpside, the free gas app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the GetUpside app? Yes, up to 25 cents a gallon. Cash back every time I buy gas. Does that actually add up to anything? I'll make 200 to $300 this year. Wow. Oh, that's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free GetUpside app now. Download the free GetUpside app now in the App Store or Google Play to save up to 25 cents a gallon when you buy gas. Use promo code FUEL for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's up to 50 cents a gallon on your next fill-up. You can cash out anytime right to your bank, PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code FUEL for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code FUEL. With people getting in shape for summer, I want to let them know my fitness center is more than treadmills and free weights. So I created a radio ad at iHeartAdBuilder.com to spread the word about our yoga and boot camp classes. Now, my business is as healthy as our members. A custom radio ad from iHeartAdBuilder is the fast, affordable way to drive customers to your business. Put the power of radio to work for you. Get started now at iHeartAdBuilder.com. Dr. Gorka here, and you know me. I am very cynical about products, especially those that claim to help people suffering from pain. So when I tell you that Relief Factor truly works, I want you to know that I mean it. I suffered from a stiff lower back for almost a decade, one so painful it made it difficult to kneel in church on Sundays. When I finally decided to give Relief Factor a try, I didn't ever imagine that I would find myself free of the pain. But that's what 
happened. Now I take Relief Factor every day. Almost 70% of the more than half a million people who have tried Relief Factor end up ordering more. That's because it works for them the way it worked for me. Isn't it time for you to get out of pain? Your first step to becoming pain-free should be to order the three-week quick start for the discounted price of only $19.95. Go to relieffactor.com or call 800 for relief to find out more about this offer. Feel the difference. Remember your kids' first steps? Yes! Remember that great birthday dinner? Uh, did you remember your anniversary? Today is, uh... Well, maybe you'll remember while you're sleeping on the dog bed. <sighs> Memories are not made in traffic. Before you leave, remember to check in. Oh, scoot over, dog. More living, less driving. Time-saving traffic updates. El Paso's News Radio. 690 KTS El Paso's News Radio. 690 KTSM. And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By M1 EP Management Corporation, 915-592-4549. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. Let you know who's coming in here next week is a topic and a guest. And uh, the guy is Mark Howe. He's with the International Boundary and Water Commission. And he's a cultural specialist. And will bring us the history of the IBWC, but also some stories we haven't heard before about how El Paso, Paso, of course, is the headquarters of this federal agency. And we'll hear about the historic corridor around La Hacienda Cafe on the border with Mexico. Interesting stuff coming up next week. Well, the Centennial Museum's got a great exhibit that's going to be opening up, and they've got a reception coming that the public is invited to, and it's the exhibit we're talking about is waterways. It highlights a very important topic of our region and our lives, and that's water. Waterways explores the past, present, and future of water in El Paso and how it divides and unites us through historic, artistic, economical, political, and social lenses. Waterways is part of Museum on Main Street, a collaboration between the Smithsonian Institution and the Centennial Museum and Chihuahuan Desert Gardens and was adapted uh, from an exhibition organized by the American Museum of Natural History in New York. So uh, this, is, this is a great event, and the reception is going to be held Tuesday, oh, excuse me, Thursday, March 10th at 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the Centennial Museum and the Chihuahua Desert Gardens. And that's located at University Avenue and Wiggins Road on the UTEP campus. And the public is invited. I think it'd be fun to go out and see it. I mean, a lot, a lot going on at Centennial, and they're an interesting crowd. We had them in here not oh, long yeah. ago. The, uh, the idea here is that the Pancho Villa Stash House downtown became what it is and more famous when it got raided. And uh, there's a newspaper article or two about that, Bernie. There was a lot of newspaper articles about that. And I think that uh, Andrew's got some of those posted on Facebook. It talks about the execution of the raid and <clears throat> what they found and what they were legally able to take. And I know that Ippolito's wife said, no, 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 you can. And, and Lewis said, you cannot take this. You need a, a court order. They were actually following the, the law. So they went back and got a court order. And seized all that and for all that uh, money and jewels, but out, out of a vault or out of a safe. It was a vault that they had just purchased a few days before from a local merchant, uh. and took it over to the uh, uh, safe house or the safe, as we call it, and uh, they had it there. Now, you got to believe with the traffic that was taking place in front of that building, and the fact that people knew it was the vias that were involved, they had to be keeping an eye on it. All of a sudden, this giant safe shows up. The lights had to go on. You know, what's what's <laughs> happening here? Yeah. yeah. And that's when they decided they were going to make that raid. Back in the day. Oh, oh, no, go ahead. ahead. Back in the day, that was really close to the river. Yeah. The river was right about where Paisano Street well, is. Well, right. at that time, just a little south of Paisano. Yeah, but not much. And so the river now is another six blocks that away. Yeah. South. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was thinking, you know, also the, the thing that some of the articles I read about Luis when she was in Cuba. Mm -hmm. They in the news, the people she actually they were socialites in, in uh, Cuba and they were saying that she was wearing all this exquisite, beautiful jewelry, which she had a lot of jewelry. I mean, you always see her. She looks so pious in her outfits. A lot of the pictures you see her in El Paso. But there she was dressed really sharp and very nice. But I know a lot of ways that people have done ways of hiding money is in jewelry. If you have 
stolen goods or, or money or whatever, you could put it into jewelry. And it's kind of hard to prove where that money came from to buy that. You might've stolen the jewelry. You That's never know. It could have been that too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and another thing too, Lewis, I, we found a picture of her with the actor Wallace Berry mm -hmm. uh, in Hollywood with him. So she went up there and was hanging out with all the movie stars. This was after Pancho Villa was dead. Well, technically he, he had her as like the main wife, but he was the guy that would go into a Mexican town and, and uh, made up with anybody he could find who was female. Yeah, she was the smart one. <laughs> isn't, the it, smart one. isn't that the best, best way to put that? I mean, it's a polite yeah. way to put well, that. They, there, there's another article we found that referred to his first wife and that uh, she was very upset. She was living in El Paso and actually had got chased out of El Paso and uh, back into Mexico, and she died a couple of years later. And then there's a story about the Wells Fargo being an intermediary on a giant shipment of silver where uh, Villa, right after he came out of exile in, the, in New Mexico, he needed money to build an army. And he managed to procure <clears throat> somewhat illegally 122 bars of silver, which was worth in today's value over $2 million. And that would help fund his army. And he gave it back to him for a ransom? Uh, well, yeah, what happened is, uh, he, you know, he told him he wanted all the, the, the silver back. And uh, they were kind of reluctant. And they were acting, they say, the Wells Fargo people, as intermediary. And he wasn't very happy with the way they were handling it. So they actually captured a couple of the executives from Wells Fargo in Mexico. And he said, I want them executed. But that evening, and you talk about relationships, he met a French girl in a saloon. Or excuse me, he wasn't drinking, but he met her and uh, forgot to give the order for execution. <laughs> Wells Fargo responded, and they, he managed to get, I think, 86 of the 122 bars back. And he couldn't figure out what happened to the rest of them. Uh, no, they no could idea. have gone on the floor of the stash house. I could have. I could I mean, have also, never... but it also could have all gone to when he was trying to make his last big stand with for weapons and ammunition and everything else. Well, he was a guy who was a very good horseman. Mm -hmm. He was able to do battle while he's on a horse. He also yeah. could teach that to other people. So he had a whole crew of banditos that turned into army when it needed to and, and fought in the revolution. Or turned into uh, there's a bunch of them there, and he, and on a on a picture there. Yeah, it's a colorized picture. It's a great picture. And and so he would be able to do anything he wanted, basically. Mm -hmm. And there was one story at one point that he supposedly put a bunch of his treasure up on the Franklin Mountain somewhere, and that may or may not have happened. But also, there's another story right behind it that he came and got it, so it's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. And so don't be go looking there. It's private property. You can't do that. And I wouldn't recommend it. And also it's either if it's not private property, it's a state park or a city park. Right. So don't be go digging on the Franklins, even though it sounds like an interesting idea. Well, also the <laughs> other side of that, again, we go back to Luce. She was after he died, she was traveling all over the world and she was dressed very nice, had a lot of rich friends. And so I'm wondering, did Luce have the money? <laughs> so maybe ah. she hung onto it somewhere. Well, he, and he, was, loose. he was assassinated in uh, 23, Three. 23. A, a, 1923. And he, he, they were worried he was going to come back and, and uh, oh, yeah. get involved again. And Another interesting story. Uh, you know, Ippolito, his brother, was his money man. Okay. Let's fast forward to 19, eight, yeah, 1923 when he was assassinated. His assassin lived in El Paso, came to El Paso, and he lived in the same building as Ippolito's ex-wife. That's too close for yeah, comfort. Yeah, it's very yeah. strange. Oh, yeah. Uh, down on Santa Fe Street. A lot of bizarre stuff. Yeah. All right. We've got to talk further after this break about the uh, stash house in downtown El Paso. Very historic place. The owner of the building is sitting here, Enrique Guajardo. Yes, sir. Ah, I get better at that. <laughs> and, and Enrique, you're going to go to lunch with us at Pepe's. Yes, sir. And Bernie and Melissa, you're going to make it? You yes, betcha. I'll be, be there. for a short time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be great because if you want to talk more about this kind of stuff, we'll be out there. And uh, this will be kind of neat. Andrew, you got any thoughts in there? We're going to go to break or what? Go to break. Doing that. Back in a moment on the El Paso History Radio Show. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, Invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call 915-592-4549, 915-592-4549. 
Fellow Texans, play it safe. Protect yourself and your family with a free COVID-19 vaccination for adults and children. Get your free vaccine at Horizon Fire Department Station Number 2 at 12361 Paseo del Este Boulevard this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. No appointment necessary. A nefarious murder plot, a jealous brother, and the most secretive nation on the planet. Big Brother, North Korea's Forgotten Prince, is the podcast that dives into the motives behind the 2017 assassination of the oldest son of North Korea's first dictator, Kim Jong-il. In North Korea, as in the mob, it's business. It's not personal. When somebody challenges you, that challenger must be eliminated. Listen to Big Brother, North Korea's Forgotten Prince on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. What's done more to improve overall health and wellness, modern medicine, or personal hygiene? Actually, it's both. But considering that bathing went mainstream in the 1800s and brushing your teeth in the 1900s, isn't it time for something new, like cleaning your nose? After all, your nose is the body's air filter for trapping dirt and germs, the first line of defense against allergens, bacteria, and viruses from getting into your lungs. But how do you clean your nose? with Navage. Navage isn't medicine, it's more like plumbing. Navage uses powered suction to pull saline in one nostril to the very back of the nose where germs can get trapped and multiply, and then out the other nostril, flushing out mucus and microbes so you can breathe better, sleep deeper, snore less, and stay healthier. Join over 2 million others and find out for yourself how refreshing and easy to use Navage is. At Navage.com, Walgreens, CBS, Rite Aid, Bed Bath, and Target. Navage, clean nose, healthy life. So the dream was to build your very own law practice, be your own boss, call all the shots. But have things like billing, HR, timekeeping, and all the other management stuff turned your dream into a nightmare? Take charge of your practice with Lexicon. We're the intersection of practice management software and legal support services for your firm. You'll get more billable and livable hours back. Lexicon marks the spot for all your practice management needs. Visit lexiconservices.com slash intersection to get the whole story or schedule a demo. Liberty Mutual Insurance Company presents And Doug. Don't you just love the smell of old books? This is a library. Sorry, ma'am. We're looking for a book titled Liberty Mutual Customizes Your Car Insurance So You Only Pay for What You Need. I don't think we carry that, but check nonfiction. It really does devour literature. Please leave. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. News Radio 690 KTSM. And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By M1 EP Management Corporation, 915-592-4549. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. Going to let you know this week what's coming down in El Paso, Inc. What is it? Catch all of the coverage of this year's El Pasoan of the Year event honoring Dr. Richard Lang. Also in the ink, March is Women's History Month, and El Paso Inc. is recounting the work of women in the borderland. El Paso's business journal, El Paso Inc., is available for home or business delivery. To receive El Paso Inc., order it online at elpasoinc.com. Great crowd over there. They put a promo in each week for us, and we do that for them. So, we love it. And yeah, it's a good it's a good crowd. And you're going to be interviewed, you said, coming up. I'm doing a and a with uh, Robbie. Yeah. Uh, Robbie Gray, okay. Also, you did, you're doing one with, the, oh, was that also with the El Diario? I did that the other day. Ah, okay. Yeah. Bernie yeah. Sargent, the man to be talked to. <laughs> well, you, you've Talk turned down. into the historian of El Paso. I, I was trying to help you do that best I could. You did. Uh, for yeah, the, for yeah. this radio show, the TV stuff we mm-hmm. did on. You're on, a great influence. Well, it, I'm, I'm more of a facilitator. Because I think it would be good to have someone out there with that image and that capacity. Yeah. And so that's been good. But let's talk about now the new. What? Well, briefly, if I could interject this, uh, you know, we were talking about history not being taught in the schools. Oh, yeah. It was in, uh, the other day I was doing a family lineage uh, research, and I found that my sixth great uncle signed the Declaration of Independence in the state of Texas at Washington on the Broadway. Be a son of a gun then. In- so I, I, when I, I sent that information to our daughter who has the twin, 10-year-old twins. And she goes, how ironic they're studying Texas history today. Ah, yes. 
So they were sharing that story with him. His name was Richard Menifee. Okay. He was also a, a judge, a governor of a county, or excuse me, a county uh, judge in, uh, what was it? Uh, Montgomery, not Colorado County. Big time stuff yeah. there, Texas system. Kind of fun stuff. Enrique, talk about the area down there. The stash house is on Leon Street. You have properties up and down that street now, and it's a, it's about a half a block away from what's going to be the Durangito area. Right. And wouldn't it be great if that turned into museums and you'd be right there? What do you have there? Well, yeah, you, obviously, you know, it will be great, uh, and not only for for that area, but for the for, for the for the city of El Paso. Um, we have, I believe, that we have so much history in that area that uh, people don't know about. And if we revitalize that area, it's going to be a huge uh, attra- a tourist attraction. I think so, you're right because I mean we're we're sitting here watching the history not be talked about on on a bigger basis, and it, it's a simple thing. People will hear about it; they want to come see it, and that's what just happened with this recent TV show on the History Channel. And I'll bet you you'll see all kinds of people coming out of town saying, banging on the door. I want to get in here and take a look. Some may be bringing shovels. I don't know, but the <laughs> but the uh, they can come and help out, right? <laughs> uh, it's up to you. <laughs> Bring a hammer, nails, right now. <laughs> yeah, right now. But we were talking about the History Channel show that was on uh, last Tuesday night. It was called uh, Beyond Oak Island, is the name of the show, and the episode was Pancho Villa's plunder. And they referred basically to the house here in El Paso. They contacted me back in in May and said, "What do you got about conquistador treasure around there?" I said, "Well, there's that, but you can't go looking for it where we think it is." But you can go down to the stash house. What's the stash house? So they got all excited about it. We got a hold of you, and away we went. And so that's how this turned out. They right. were they were really looking interested in, in they're treasure hunters. They're not treasure finders, which is a different <laughs> a different group. I think the treasure finders don't want to be on TV. To be honest with you. But mm, these are treasure hunters. They did the show on the History Channel, and Melissa, you put up a link. Yes, I did. I put it up on our Facebook page as well as the uh, the Facebook Live Tube. Uh, Excuse me, live streaming and also our regular Facebook page, so they can find it there. So you can go click on yeah, that. And you don't have to have an account. You, this one you can because they're after they've been shown, you, the public can see them. And that's a, the whole show. Mm-hmm. Excellent. And uh, we took a look at it last Tuesday night. It was an amazing process to watch. It's a bit superficial, but it's also when you look at it, it's a very good promotion for El Paso. Yeah, Big time. That's yeah. all I do. So what do you guys think about the whole show there? I thought it was great. I, I, I want to thank Enrique too and his family for joining us. It was a lot of fun meeting the kids. I've met the wife before, and I think I met your son once, but having them come over to the house along with your brother-in-law and his family. Right. Yeah, and so we had all of them over at the house. Jackson was there. Max was there and uh, had some beverages and some food and, and sat down. It's like a giant movie theater just sitting there watching it. Oh, it was, that was great. It was great fun, but I thought it was fun. You know, it, it, it's sensational. They, they do sensational TV. I mean, if it was something where you know, we watched an episode where they're looking for Sam Bass's treasure just yeah. to see this format, this new format. And you know, oftentimes what they hope to find is not there, not right away. And so they try to keep the interest going. Yeah, and they have to I come think, up with something to make it entertaining. Yeah. Oh, I know. You know, we use like these architect, uh, ar- archaeologists will go, I know it's there. Or like, uh, what was it, what's his name? Geraldo. Yeah. You know, looking for uh, uh, something that wasn't there. We're getting close to We're it. Getting close, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was uh, so they, Capone's sta- safe. That yeah. There was nothing so there. They yeah. did, they but, did but that was, treatment. But. They did that treatment. I mean, it's sensational TV. They got excitement. Uh, but what they did walk away with is there's got to be more there. So they're convinced there's more. And I think Enrique convinced them, as we did, uh, there, there's got to be more there. There may be. Now, one question did come up. Uh, you know, Mark Howe had sent a, a Facebook, and we're going to probably talk to him after the show at Peppy's, uh, little plug, uh, is that uh, the privies, we know exactly where the privies were. Privies being outhouses. Outhouses, or... yeah. In the yeah. back by the wall. In the back yeah. by the wall. So, and they didn't even go out there, did no, they? No, they no, did not. No. no. And usually that's where some real interesting stuff is. And I've got a word for it, but I won't say it later. Well, they wouldn't put necessarily the gold bars down there. Oh, no. Well, you don't, you don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. You really you, don't know. You never know. I mean, In a panic, they might hide. Who's I mean, going to go down digging in, in those days? Nobody, maybe not. I so, Enrique, you've got big plans, a restaurant coming, and it, basically the whole house will be a restaurant? The, the house will be the restaurant, and then the soldier's house will be the bar. Oh. So it's going to be two, uh, two uh, different uh, places you can visit. So these are two buildings on one property. Yeah, there are two buildings. And one they, of them, uh, the soldiers used to live, and then the house where Pancho Villa used to live, that will be the restaurant. Interesting stuff. Great plans you got there. What else can we talk about for this whole thing? Because this, 
There's so much history connected to Pancho Villa. And again, we do this because that's so much of El Paso history right there. Sure. Well, did we well, talk about who the raid uh, by the government officials, the customs? Did we talk about that very much? No, we didn't get into specifics on that. Well, it was that's what's on the plaque, right? So, well, it's on the plaque. Plus, uh, if they go to the Facebook page, that you know they'll have a lot of those pictures. They can look at them. They can read the newspaper clippings that came out the day after and a couple of days after as to what was transpiring and who the uh, lead agent was that broke into that uh, safe. Andrew, you got a couple of pictures of the house full of uh, uh, camera people and, and that, because they were, they were like, you know, you, you don't, you never see the camera people on the TV no, show, no. but they did a fabulous job. And there's a whole group of people out there that you see all the cameras and, and they had like three cameras with people manning them, but then they put GoPros cameras all over the place. Yeah. And yep. so they have so much to work with when they do one of these TV shows. It's just amazing. They've got the budget. Oh, they do. And uh, that was on the History Channel last Tuesday night, and they're there digging a big hole there. It, it was a more amazing process to be there all day because uh, those are very hot days back in July. I, that wasn't the good part. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> watching, El Paso. But watching <laughs> them work and then realizing what well, they're going to snip this up into nothing, but basically they did. Yeah. But the whole point was it was a good promotion for the city. Absolutely. It was a good promotion for the fact that there's history here. And for this guy here. And Enrique's specific location. Yeah. Uh, and you were very accommodating to those people, Enrique. What did you think of those guys? Oh, they, they, those guys are great. Um, they were, they, I mean, they're interesting, you know, because you, know, you once you start talking to them and, 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 and they tell you all the places they've been to, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's amazing that they choose the stash house. I mean, you know, because they're all over the world. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of places they can go, and they decided to come here to El Paso. So that's, that's a very unique they thought it was interesting. And for the, for the sake of the people that watch the show and, and have not participated in an event like this, uh, you, know, you know, Jack spent a lot of hours with them. And from that lot of hours, you saw the footage where you were on, on camera. Nothing to it. Yeah. And David Romo, myself and Max, same thing. We spent a lot of time. I spent three hours being interviewed. And, and you know, for 30 seconds or yeah, less. For, it, maybe. But, you know, that's just the nature of it. So it's exciting, I think, to get on there and, and get phone calls from all over the country going, hey, we saw you on TV. Yeah, and there were, people got interviewed who weren't on it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Harry, Harry no, Von right. Harry was there. He, they flew him in. And he wasn't on it. That, you know, yeah, which I was really surprised on that. Yeah, he's got some great history, too. So and, there's a lot that goes on with a TV show that is, is not necessarily detail-oriented. It's more sensational-oriented. But back to the fact that they did actually promote El Paso by doing this. Big time. And um, I got calls from people I haven't seen in 50 years. Yeah. Uh, e emails and stuff on Facebook. You know, it's fun too, Jack, is it, when you look at something like this taking place, uh, it opens up a lot of windows, so to speak. You know, people call and say, I know this piece of information. I've got this piece of information. And I think uh, the more we've dealt, uh, dwelled on the history of uh, El Paso, you and I have both had a lot of people come out of the woodwork saying, did you know this? Did you know that? Yeah. And bringing more and more information. And it's, you know, we're accumulating a heck of a lot of history on El Paso and, and Juarez and this whole area. It's an interesting history, and I think it should be promoted, and that's the whole point. Enrique, you were mentioning that it's not taught in the schools here. That's, that is correct. And I, and I feel that, you know, as, as you know, young kids grow, you know, they, they kind of lose, lose that touch of the history and how important the history is. And, and if we can figure a way where we can start promoting that history of our, of our, our city, you know, people will probably be more interested in of, you know, of the history. Yeah. We took advantage of the potential that they offered. Hey, we're going to come down there and look at this place. And like we say, they did it in their own way. But I think the word got out there that there's history here in El Paso on the streets of El Paso. That's the whole thing. What are yes. they going to come back on you? Because you told them about the Lost Padre Mine, didn't you? And I did. And I, I said, you can't dig up there. It's private property. Yeah. Those people don't like that. And then the folks, uh, otherwise, they have uh, it's a state park or it's a city park. Yeah. And you're not going to get permission to but dig I mean, in those. This just again, it's some other things that are here, you know, for them that maybe they will come back. But the, we, we do have an amazing history and it comes from the South. Basically, it started from the South, came up with Don Juan de Oñate and kept going. And, uh, we, you know, we're still getting all kinds of things that happen here that uh, uh, amaze people. And, and uh, again, the arena area down there, this is right next to it. Mm -hmm. It would certainly be nice if they turned all those little buildings into museums. And put put the arena some some nice convenient place that doesn't stomp on the, on the history of El Paso. I yeah. think that's basically what you were saying. Yeah, and add to the traffic problem we have downtown whenever there's any kind of an event that takes place. Yeah, we have a lot of parking, but how do you get there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 there was an event at the History Museum, and I'm on the foundation. I was supposed to go to for the grand opening. I spent 45 minutes downtown. I never found a place to park. I never even got anywhere close to the museum. Oh, 
involved in. Yeah. So it's, you know, th- those things happen. So we have to plan for those things. We, we just, do. All right. Nick, taking a break here on yeah. the El Paso Wister Radio Show. We do have a call coming in. And you got some Facebook comments here and there, I'll bet. Uh, I'm posting we'll, we'll look the at links those. and such. Uh, All right, we'll look oh, at those. Oh, yeah, Barbara Given Bacious. Thanks to everyone for this. Uh, Durangito being possibly on the Asarco is excellent. There you go. Yeah, put the arena over there. It, uh, plenty of room, plenty of plenty of land. All right, taking a break here. Back in just a moment. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. Poverty was already rampant in Haiti, but the last two years have been especially devastating for the children and their families. You can help when you sponsor a child with Compassion International. Get started today by texting the word radio to 97646. Susan, it's so great to finally be able to get together again. Oh, it sure is. And I really appreciate you picking up the bill. I'm happy to. I've got the extra cash. Since we've all been driving so much more again, I've been using GetUpside, the free gas app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the GetUpside app? Yes, up to 25 cents a gallon. Cash back every time I buy gas. Does that actually add up to anything? I'll make 200 to 300 dollars this year. Wow. That's serious extra cash i'm downloading the free get upside app now download the free get upside app now in the app store or google play to save up to 25 cents a gallon when you buy gas use promo code fuel for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank that's up to 50 cents a gallon on your next fill up you can cash out anytime right to your bank paypal or an e-gift card for amazon and other brands just download the free get upside app and use promo code fuel for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank that's code fuel fellow texans play it safe Protect yourself and your family with a free COVID-19 vaccination for adults and children. Get your free vaccine at Horizon Fire Department Station Number 2 at 12361 Paseo del Este Boulevard this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. No appointment necessary. If I'm going to work from my home office, I need my home office to work for me. It's possible at Staples. To be most productive, my home office needs to have everything my office office has. Also possible because your local Staples store has the tools, tech, and furniture you need to get work done. From home. And right now, you can save up to $100 on select chairs to put the finishing touch on your home office. Explore what's new at Staples, the working and learning store. Ends 3-5, in-store only, while supplies last. You could save big when you bundle your home and auto with Progressive, but when we just come out and say it, it feels like it falls a bit flat. So, we're going to tap into human emotion. First, with some music. Then, in a serious tone, I'll say, save big when you bundle your home and auto with Progressive. And even though it was about saving money with Progressive, we'll fade out the music so you know it was poignant. Wow. Powerful stuff. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Discount not available in all states or situations. There are tons of ways to connect with your favorite iHeartRadio station. Calling, texting, DMing, faxing. Huh? What's faxing? But now you can talk to your favorite iHeartRadio stations with one tap. Listen on the free iHeartRadio app and tap the record button on the full screen player to send us a voice message, shout outs, song requests, wordle tips, and more. Yes! Get on the radio with just a tap. Only on the free iHeartRadio app. Discover music, radio, and podcasts you'll love. iHeartRadio. News Radio 690, KTSM El Paso. And now let's turn back the pages of time and return to the El Paso History Show. Brought to you by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, 6761 Donovan Drive. By M1 EP Management Corporation, 915-592-4549. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino with El Paso Symphoneers and Gift Shopping. 
by Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. Here again, El Paso History with Melissa Sargent and Jackson Polk. Quick item on the McGoffin home. They're at 1120 McGoffin Avenue downtown, 915-533-5147. They're having walking tours in March and also an event um, coming up on the March the 10th. A lecture by Joseph Longo about women and social change in El Paso. What do you got? March 11th, the Rio Grande chapter of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas are at the Greenery Restaurant in uh, the Sunland Park Mall at 11 a.m. And their program would be 4,000 Years of Texas History at Keystone Heritage Park. It's presented by Bernie Sargent. So you get a great opportunity to learn more about Texas history. Call Patricia Kidney at 915-591-2326 for more information. Carlos, you said you had both grandparents fighting each other in the Mexican Revolution? Yes, my grand, my, my dad, dad used to fight with Pancho Villa and my mom's dad with Carranza. <laughs> I'll be done. Oh, my, yes. What a history. Yes, my, my grandfather, my mom's uh, dad used to be a scout at 12 years old. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you for yes. sharing the story. And interesting stuff, isn't it? That's great. Yes. And then uh, another quick, real quick, uh, uh, Jackson. Uh, my father used to tell us stories and my dad used to tell us that Pancho Villa used to carry some kind of spoon, I don't know what material, and he knew if he, they were trying to uh, poison him. Thank oh, my you. God. Well, thank you for wow. sharing that. A lot of weird stuff in our history. Well, he had, a horrible he Thanksgiving had dinner, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, he had <laughs> official tasters. Don't eat there. All right. All right. Enrique, we've had a, lo- a nice time here with you for two hours. You'll be thank at you. the uh, Pepe's if people want to ask you more. But you've got plans in the future to open the stash house to the public. It was on TV this week, and the, the plans aren't formed completely yet. But people can walk by and take a picture of the outside right now. Oh, yeah. They, they, absolutely. People can actually see how the house used to be, you know, because it's fully restored. Uh, we're just about to finish with the architects and see where we're going. So we uh, open for tourists someday in the future for sure. Yes, for sure. Bernie, your last thoughts of the day? Yeah, I would say Enrique and I are going to talk, along with a few other people, a way that they can have that open on a, on a specified basis to where people can go in knowing ahead of time what time is going to be open and so on. That way it doesn't, uh, this man's very busy and we don't want to tear him away from trying to get some of his other projects done. So yeah, I think we'll come up with a plan and it'll be, it'll be a good one. And thank you, El Paso. Well, yeah, thank you for understanding the history and listening to us. And it's been kind of an interesting time. And uh, we've, as we mentioned, we're going to turn the show over to Andrew Polk in a couple of weeks and he's going to continue it. And you're ready for that, Andrew. Oh yeah. Ready to go. Ready to keep talking about the many wonderful aspects of El Paso's history because, I mean, we'll never run out of things to talk about. There's so much risk history here and all the things going on with it. We'll keep it going. Saturday Absolutely. morning history will continue 10 to noon right here on KTSN. Absolutely. El Paso history keep the history going. And you guys are going to scoot somewhere else. You got your house sold. Yeah, we got a new adventure coming up. We're going to hit somewhere else in Texas. We're not quite sure yet. We haven't decided where we're <laughs> going to land. Good luck with that. Interesting, yeah. Good yeah. And I'm Living sit- in a trailer. And <laughs> I'm going to keep helping Andrew where I can. I'll probably end up doing some of the announcing and I think I'm going to do some history moments right away and make sure that he keeps doing history moments on the El Paso History Good. Radio Show. People like those. That'll be kind of fun. And the thing is about the history of the, the, the stash house, it's there. You can walk by now and take a look out at the outside. Mm-hmm. Someday it'll be open. Also, you're going to have a and b on the corner, and you're also renovating the rock house on the same block. Yes, sir. That is right. A lot of, mm-hmm. lot of stuff going on down there. Hey, if you want some good food, he's got a little uh, place around the corner. That's right, on, on Paisano. Yeah. On Paisano. Yes. Yeah. It looks like a gas station, but it's a restaurant. It's, it's, it's a both. gas station. It's, it's both. both. And a restaurant. Yeah, great food. Enrique, gas and lunch. Enrique Guajardo, appreciate you doing that. I'm getting better at this? Yes, sir. <laughs> and uh, come on out to uh, Pepe's today, and uh, maybe next week we'll have a party and, and celebrate our victory of declaring victory. We've done years and decades of this. 21 for We you? all done good. Uh, 21 coming up here for me in March. and uh, 11 for her. Uh, give or take uh, a whole bunch for you. Yeah, and even if you add when we were back on with Leon Metz 100 years ago, it seems like <laughs> well, <laughs> with, I, with I, six guns and such, it, it's amazing, the it, history. It's amazing what we've man- managed to do here on the radio show and, and, and the TV stuff we've done. I think it's great. And Enrique, good luck with the, the house down there. Thank you, sir. And Thank the you. whole block you're renovating <laughs> and and, uh, and made that whole neighborhood turn into an historic district. Yep, I hope so. Uh, That's the idea. It's going to be fun. Well, uh, okay, we're going to do we'll get out of here. Andrew, any last quick thoughts for you because you're uh, coming up here? Uh, just a couple of comments coming in. Uh, Mark Morales saying thank you both very much. I believe directed towards uh, you, you and Melissa here. Uh, much love. Evelyn Jassari saying great show. Thank you for the information and interest and a whole lot more. And also Blanco Jimenez saying thanks, Enrique, for helping to preserve our history. 
I want to thank Melissa personally for everything you've yeah. done on the History Show. It's been a whole lot of work. Well, yeah, and thank you for letting us. me do this and, sure. and Bernie having him on it. It's just, it's been a lot of fun. It's We're hobbyists, history hobbyists. That's what I've decided. One now. more show next week. We'll see you then and there. In the meantime, we can go to Peppy's. Yeah, thank you guys really. for being here. Yeah, appreciate welcome. it. Everybody see you next week. Thank on the you guys. Old thanks thanks for the invitation. Indeed. And, and I hope this is, you know, interesting for El Paso. You know, we, we want to share this. Thank you, Enrique. Yeah. Thank you. Next week, we'll see, we'll see you, you then. Yes. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to the El Paso History Show. We hope you'll join us again next Saturday morning, 10 to noon, and be sure to tell a friend about us. Sponsored by Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate, 915-585-7777. By Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant, home of the one and only Margarita. By Keystone Heritage Park on Donovan Drive, 915-584-0563. By M1 EP Management Corporation. By Mission Del Rey, 1421 Lee Trevino, with El Paso souvenirs and gift shopping. Thank you for joining us from the studios of News Radio 690 KTSM AM, El Paso. It's Ram Truck Month at Southern Park Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Fiat. Don't wait for your tax refund. Buy now and get huge savings with zero down. Save thousands in interest with zero APR for 72 months on all new 2022 Dodge Charger, SXT, and GT models. Huge selection of new cars, trucks, and SUVs with huge savings. 2022 Ram Trucks with 2.9% APR for 72 months. Zero down. Zero payments for 90 days. Get her done. Upside down in your trade? We want it.